I want to bring you an exclusive report now about a story that CNN has been following very closely because it is one of the most important of our time. It's about the crackdown against the ethnic Uyghurs in China's northwestern Xinjiang province. China accused of running a massive system of internment camps there. Now, according to the U.S. State Department, more than one million Uyghurs and members of other ethnic minority groups have been detained in these camps over the years. Well, we are now hearing accusations that Beijing is not only cracking down on Uyghurs at home, but also trying to silence those who live abroad. Ivan Watson spoke with some ethnic Uyghurs overseas who say they experienced that pressure firsthand. Here is his report. This was one brief moment of freedom for Mayila Yakafu. A video call in September from Mayila after being released from detention for just one day. She spoke from China's northwestern region of Xinjiang to her cousin who lives in Sweden. I didn't recognize her at the very beginning because she looks so pale and she looks so weak and she has a short hair. They cut her hair in the detention facility. This was Mayila in happier times. A single mother of three and a member of China's Uyghur Muslim minority who taught Mandarin language classes and sold insurance until Chinese authorities took her away to an internment camp in March 2018. She has spent most of the last two and a half years in and out of detention, cut off from her children in Xinjiang and her parents and sister in Australia. The Chinese government accused my sister with financially support terrorism, which is she sent money to my parents and I, me and me to buy a house here. Maila's sister and her parents run this Uyghur restaurant in Adelaide, Australia. Maila helped these immigrants start their life here by sending them money to buy a house. Her father says the Chinese government is punishing the family for that generosity. I feel pain every day as if I am stepping on nails because the cost of this house is my daughter's suffering. Mayila's family agonized over whether going public would hurt or help their missing daughter. In the end, they launched a campaign to push for her release. From Sweden, Nairola Ilima tells me when she tweeted about her cousin, Three times, Chinese police showed up at the door of her parents' home in Xinjiang. They printed out the Chinese version and took it to my mom and said, look, your daughter, she's making Chinese government look very, very bad. You need to tell your daughter, stop it. The second time she tweeted about Mayila, just hours later, Chinese officials took Mayila away. And her family has been told she's now back in detention. Her cousin fears it was because she spoke out. In a statement to CNN, China's mission to the European Union accused Mayila's family of being members of the Eastern Turkestan Liberation Organization, which Beijing has labeled a terrorist group. But the family denies any connection to the group and points out that Chinese authorities issued travel visas to Mayila's mother, allowing her to travel unimpeded to and from China as recently as August of 2016. Beijing routinely denies allegations by human rights groups and the U.S. government that accuse China of a massive detention campaign in Xinjiang, rounding up close to two million Uyghurs and members of other minorities into internment camps. Chinese officials insist these are actually vocational training centers aimed at stopping Islamist extremism. They publish glossy videos from so-called graduates of the camps. Mayila's cousin calls this propaganda. It seemed exactly like during the Second World War, how Hitler made propaganda about the happy Jew. If it's real, then why are there so many Uyghurs outside looking for their family members? CNN has interviewed many Uyghurs in exile. Like Mayila's family, they talk of hopelessness and guilt for their missing loved ones, lost in Xinjiang's giant system of arbitrary detention. What has the last three years been like for you? Extremely pain, extremely painful. I feel there's a gun behind my head. Every time when I move, I may well face very serious consequences. 
and my family member will pay for that. Ivan Watson, CNN, Hong Kong.